All right. So I guess just start today by talking a little bit about how, what today meant for you as, as someone who has lost your daughter to gun violence to be here and to sit in the Rose Garden while the president announced yeah. these actions. Today was a day of um, truly mixed emotions. On the one hand, I, I, I had such hope and optimism because of why were we here and what happened here today. And then on the other hand, I can't separate what happened to my daughter from why I'm here today. And when the president mentioned her name, I, I got very emotional and, and I broke down, to be quite honest, uh, because my daughter should be with me and I shouldn't be here today. Um, but here we are, and today was the start of something different in this country. Today is the day we start saving lives. You also got to go into the Oval Office and, I did. and meet with the president privately afterwards. Can you talk a little bit about what that meeting was like, what it meant to you to have him you know, take the time to speak with you? Listen, I've spoken often about how deeply I, 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 I care for this president. And it really dates back to the days after Jamie was killed when he personally reached out and he gave me advice that has mattered, honestly, more to my going forward through grief than any other single person has. And so having him, you know, call me in and getting the chance to spend that time with him today to discuss this one-on-one -on -one and to discuss where we go from here mattered. He knows, the vice president who was there knows, and everyone who supports this administration knows, I will do everything I can to make sure we see this through. And, oh, go ahead. This was a start, President Biden said. Yes. But he's made some promises during his campaign that he hasn't followed through on yet. Are you frustrated at all by the la that this is just the start of the action on day 78 here on the issue of guns for this administration? This isn't the start. They've been working on it to get to this point today. Um, I've been having conversations with the administration now for, for an ongoing time, as have others. So today isn't the start. Today is the start of a lot of public work. But, but here's the thing, you know, they, they came into this White House, and I think we all understand, COVID was, you know, dominated the first 10 issues that they had to deal with. Um, but I, I, I want to focus on where we go going forward, because since my daughter was killed on February 14th, 2018, too many days have felt like we've been on this freight train going in the wrong direction. And what today did is to put the brakes on that. It said, we're, we're not doing it the other way anymore. Today, we are going to start taking, showing leadership. And we're going to start taking action and we're going to start doing the work to save lives. Sir, you've had some, um, you know, you've had to be involved in the politics of this now for the last few years. You know how tricky this is for Congress to take up. What makes you think that President Biden's going to make it any easier or faster to get legislation passed? Because I believe in effective, inspiring leadership, and I believe that this president is committed to leading on this. I also believe that we've now seen two elections that I can argue strongly were very much decided on this issue, where Americans went to polls and voted on this issue, and they fired other legislators who were wrong on this issue because they want to be safe, because they want their kids to be safe, they want their parents to be safe. And so I would just encourage encourage everyone in the Senate to pay attention to the last two election results if they want to keep their jobs. Which senators lost an election over this issue? Well, looking back at the House side, I, I would argue it flipped on this in 2018, and the Democrats are now the majority party in the Senate. And I would argue this issue played a large role in that. So I am telling you, gun violence if, if someone can name another issue that has a higher um, 
rating in public opinion polls, then the idea of doing the bare minimum, which is background checks, I don't know of one. And so I just think it takes leadership. I think I look forward to the Senate reopening to visitors because I and other survivors will be there meeting with these senators, reminding them what's at stake, reminding them what happened to those we love, reminding them that it could be someone they love later in the day if we don't take action now. And, and so we're going to get this done. This is the year. No, no, no. There, there was, there was a, a gathering in the Oval Office. And with you and him and who else was there? Um, there were, there were a bunch of uh, uh, representatives in there. There, uh, the vice president was in there. There were some other people who were out in the crowd that um, were in there. I, I, you know, I'm not sure of all the attendees. The Attorney General. I, I, I think I'm being pulled. Correct. Okay. Well, sir, if I could, the sir, I'm sorry, there? question for the Miami Herald. I have one question for you. If you, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about how the last three months of activism have looked like compared to the three years prior on this issue? They've been filled with hope. We're going to get this done. So thanks, guys. I know they're calling me. Nice talking you. to you all. Did the president give you any promises in that global meeting about like, what the next steps would be? I, I, I got to go, but, but thank you. So thank you so take care, everybody. Thank you.